This is Friday Night Football on KLST. Brought to you by Randall Motors. Hey there, and welcome on into week two of Friday Night Football. I'm your host, Ryan Campo. We'll hear from Sabrina Hoover in just a little bit. It seems like we've blinked and we're already in week two time. Please slow down. A busy night on the sidelines from all over West Texas and beyond, including the Central Bobcats, who made the long trek west to El Paso to take on the Rams from Montwood. Two teams looking for win number one on the season. Over in El Paso, Central taking on the Rams. Christian English takes a snap, shows off the speed. No folks, that's clip not sped up. He's just that fast. Slicing through defenders to score the first points of the game. QB Reed here almost faked out the camera crew out that one. Tyree Brawley takes a handoff, extends Central's lead 21-13 in the third quarter and the Bobcats would hang on by two points getting their first win of the 2023 season 35-33. It was an impressive week one outing for the Lakeview Chiefs traveling over to La Mesa and picking up a big road victory to start the year off in the win column. Tonight an opponent they beat last year for the first time since 1983. A battle of 1-0 teams the home opener tonight for the Lakeview taking on Sweetwater. Fourth down and short for the Stangs. Direct snap QB R Noah Rios. Stiffs the play out, lowers his shoulder, stops him short of the ball. That's a Chiefs first down the other way. The defense came to play in this one. Sweetwater running back, makes a few man miss, cuts it back to the other side, loses the ball. Players fighting to gain possession. In comes Trey Henry with the fumble recovery. Chiefs down in the first, not looking for long. Off this, Adrian Flores fields the kickoff, sees daylight in the middle of the field, and full speed makes a few defenders look silly. He is gone. Chiefs get their first touchdown of the game. It's inching closer. It's 14-8. However, Lakeview would fall on their home opener tonight, 62-35. They're back in action next week when they head on the road to Vernon. A big week for our Contra Valley teams involving crossover, specifically Class 3A Division 2 taking on teams from Class 2A Division 1. We got four of them tonight involving two groups right here in the Contra Valley. A year ago, Cisco took down Wall. The Hawks looking for some redemption. Fourth ranked Wall taking on Cisco. They've met every year since 2014. They'll meet again tonight. Cisco with the ball running back looks to get stopped there. That's Briggs Jones, Garen Wiggins, keep him out of the end zone. Hawks now with the ball, flexbone offense doing its thing, causing confusion. Jones emerges heading down the sideline, one man to meet, but is tackled just before the 15-yard line. Wall now in deep Lobo territory. Gunner Diller, the pitch back. Little Nathan Peppa follows his blockers head first in the end zone for the Wallhawk touchdown. Wall goes down to win tonight. 2-0 and oh on the season, setting up a big one next week on the road against Jim Ned, 27-10 the final. A new era of football kicked off last week for the Brady Bulldogs and Jaron Roberts beginning his tenure as head coach over in Mason. A thriller on the road and a top 25 showdown. Last year, Brady and Mason met for the first time since 2007. Tonight, they meet for the second straight year. First quarter, Brady Bulldogs break out the tricks. The reverse perfectly Played here, Zeke Jones, the recipient of the touchdown. Brady leads 7-0. Mason, though, would respond immediately. At first, you don't see him. He's lost in the pile, and look, there he is right there. That's Sutton Solerio, who goes to the outside to tie this one up after a lengthy quarterback keeper. Frankie Boley calls his own number, gets Mason the first lead of the game. Mason on the ground once again, this time. Good man, Ryan Todd, who's there for the short yard of touchdown. Mason, 2-0 on the season. They look impressive. A 41-7 victory tonight at home. The Junction Eagles on the road tonight in San Saba. They come out with a thriller for their first victory of the season, a 34-22 win for head coach Scott Freeman and company. The Eagles back home next week when they host DeHannis. Over in Cristobal, the Cougars taking on Grape Creek, both looking for their first wins of the 2023 season. Stanton McLaughlin takes the snap again, sold it nice, fake juke, the camera crew out, pitches it off. Jake Edmondson has gone up the sideline, makes a man miss, dives in the end zone for six. Cougs league six nothing in the first. McLaughlin in the shotgun again, takes the snap, pitches it to Manuel Rojas. Gets busy, reads the blocks from his receiver, hits the hole, up the sideline, not a soul with him stopping that man. He'd go to score his second touchdown of the game. Cougs would lead 14-0 at the half, and they go on to get their first victory of the season, 14-8 over Grape Creek. Over in Odessa this evening, game two for new TLCA San Angelo head coach Paolo Gonzalez. His Eagles met up with Odessa Compass Academy tonight for just the second time on the gridiron. Tonight, this one still going on as we speak. 24-24 as both teams looking for win number one on the season. TLCA San Angelo back in action next week on the road when they travel to blizzard country to take on winters. 
All right, we've reached the end of quarter number one here on Friday Night Football. Time to regroup. I'm going to grab some water. Keep the highlights and scores coming your way, including our KLSD Game of the Week. Boy, was this a good one tonight, featuring a playoff rematch from a year ago between Miles and Sterling City. We'll have that and much more after the break. Welcome back into Friday Night Football. We begin the second quarter down in the Class 2A ranks. The Sonora Broncos looking for some revenge this week against their opponent. Stay inside the top 10 statewide rankings. Home opener tonight for the Broncos taking on the Bulldogs from Cahoma. Sonora getting to strike early on this one. Hand off Edgar DeLuna. He's going to break every Bulldog tackle again and again and again and again. Playing Bronco football right off the first snap. A 53-yard touchdown. That one starts the game off with a bang. Not too much longer in the second. Juan Castillo, quarterback, going to do a quick quarterback keeper. He'll run it in from five yards out for another Bronco touchdown. Fake handoff to one Bronco into the arms of the other. In the arms of the Angel, bombarded by a pile of dogs and Broncos. But look who's there. Edgar DeLuna. Surprise, surprise, going to do it all the way to the his house. Broncos on top. Sonora wins big tonight on their home soil, 44-30 over Cahoma. Staying with times in District 3-2A Division 1 after their impressive 65-14 victory a week ago on the road against TLCA San Angelo. Home opener this evening for the Lions from Ozona facing a tough wink opponent who's just hovering around that top 10 spot in the rankings from Dave Campbell's Texas football. Lions gave everything they could and then some tonight. Wink leading at 48-36 late in the fourth. Ozona back in action at home next week when they host the Punchers from Mason. Our KLSD game of the week this week features a rematch from a bi-district playoff thriller a year ago, Miles and Sterling City. Last year, the Eagles won a thriller, 43-42. Tonight, they meet again in the regular season. Both teams 1-0 after rolling in their respective openers. Sterling City hosting Miles. First quarter, Ty Turner keeps it himself. He'll pitch it off to Johnny Money Monreal. Hug the sideline, pass some defenders. That man's gone. 37-yard touchdown. He says it himself. Eagles lead 7-0. Miles looking to strike back. Haven Book. Scrambles around, deep pass. Tevin Meaty in for the Bulldog touchdown. Two point conversion. Miles up 8 7. After an interception, Eagles will have possession once again. Turner fakes it. He'll keep it himself, falling into the end zone for another Sterling City touchdown. Surprise, surprise. Another thriller tonight. The Eagles come out on top 36 32. That's where we find our very own Sabrina Hoover live out at Eagles Stadium with more. Hi, Sabrina. Hey, Ryan. Well, our game of the week certainly lived up to the expectations. It was a nail-biter to the very end of the game. This, the Eagles would gain good momentum with a Johnny Monreal 37-yard touchdown rush, and then the Miles Bulldogs would just strike right back. Haven Book connecting to Tevin Mead. It's also worth noting that both Haven and Tevin both had outstanding performances last week. However, in this game, Eagles defense per pressured quarterback Haven Book relentlessly. He looked a little banged up throughout the game, as did Mead, but he would come back after halftime and this game. Final score here, 36-32, Sterling City. A big victory at home. Miles suffers their first loss of the season. The Miles will face Water Valley next Friday, and the Eagles will face Abilene TLCA. Reporting from Eagles Stadium, I'm Sabrina Hoover. Back to you, Ryan. This live shot is sponsored by AFCO Steel. And the El Dorado Eagles began the 2023 season with a rivalry win at home against Cristobal as year two with head coach Chad Tuttle began with a big time win. Well, tonight, Eagles looking to start 2-0 for the first time since 2021 when they finished 10-2, taking on the Blizzards from Winters tonight. Well, El Dorado won by a slim six last year. Tonight, all Eagles in this one, 40-12, the final tonight. The Eagle, Eagles host 10th-ranked Sonora next week in our KLST Game of the Week. What a game that could potentially be. Also a team out of District 5-2A, Division 2, the Water Valley Wildcats starting off the Aaron Whitmire era. A statement thumping a week ago on the road, hitting the road once again this season tonight over in Hamlin. The Pied Pipers won a 6-2 
defensive slugfest in their first ever meeting a year ago. Tonight, a tight one once again between these two schools, but it's the Pied Pipers who go on to claim victory. Water Valley moving to one and one on the season. They'll host Miles next week, another Contra Valley crossover game that should be a good one. We've reached halftime on the Friday Night Football show. We head down to the six-man ranks. We enter the second half, including the steers from Robert Lee, who look to start 2-0 and on the season as they hosted Sands tonight. We'll have that much more. You're watching Friday Night Football right here on KLST. Hey, right, cheerleaders, and you're watching Friday Night Football on KLST. All right, welcome back to Friday Night Football. We shrink the field now. Six-man highlights and scores from tonight, including the steers from Robert Lee under second-year head coach Lee McCone. Robert Lee hosting Sands this evening, looking to start 2-0 on the season. First quarter, pitch, pitch out to Braden Sherwood. All sorts of space to run through. He's in for six. Robert Lee leads it early on. Second quarter now, Robert Lee trailing 12-6. It's Sherwood again. Reaches way across the goal line. Steers take the lead 14-12. Still in the second. Why not? Sherwood once again gets the pitch back, hits the B button. My favorite move in Madden. Gets one more key block. He's into the end zone to give the steers the lead once again. Throw out the hats. That's a hat trick for the young man right there. However, Robert Lee would fall tonight at home to the Mustangs 53-44. Week one was an impressive showing for the Erie County Hornets. A new team that hung with Buena Vista until the Longhorns scored with 14 seconds left to win it. Last night, the Hornets looking to get Sean Harrison, win number one as head coach. Hornets taking on Spurs. The Bulldogs over in Blackwell. Bulldogs with the ball first. QB handoff. He's brought down Keegan Wadsworth, not before pitching it out. It's a fumble recovery. Iron Davis takes this one to the his house. Puts the Hornets on the board first in this one. Not long later, Davis with the back pass. Colton Loudermilk finds an open lane. They'll take it all the way into the end zone with ease. Going untouched. Hornets lead 14-0. Here in County, once again with the ball, almost a copy and paste play this time out to Wyatt Morris. He'll take it right up the middle for an Erie County touchdown. Sean Harrison gets his first win, as do the Hornets of 2023, 48-0 last night. Also in District 13-1A, uh, Cherokee defeated Menard tonight, 79-34. They met for the first time since 1963. And the third and final team victorious out of District 13-1A tonight, the Falcons from Very Best, who go on the road, defeat Zephyr to move to 2-0 oh on the season. They'll host Bront next weekend. Down to District 13-1A Division 2 we go. The Bront Longhorns began the Rocky Rawls era with a loss last week at home, looking to get to 500 early on this season tonight. Bront back home once again, taking on the Bobcats of rule here in week two. First quarter, Cole Knight takes a handoff, bounces off to the outside, shows off his P.F. Flyers rolling into the end zone for Mr. Knight. Six nothing, Bront. Still in the first, Bront up 12 nothing. Mr. Knight once again gets the pitch, goes right up the middle with a man on his back, able to cross the goal line. 20 nothing, Bront. Late in the first, Longhorns go to the air. Jayton Galvin, what a pretty ball to a wide open Raymond Williams. He's in for the Bront touchdown. All Longhorns and went tonight, they win it. Shut out. Very rare in six man, 52 nothing, the final. A District 13 1A crossover tonight. Uh, I'll tell you about it here. Blackwell defeats Eden 46 25. Eden will host Blanket next week. Blackwell also at home when they take on Highland. Paint Rock Indians kicked off the 2023 season with a two touchdown victory at home against TLCA Midland. Last night, Eagles, or excuse me, the Indians looking to face off against the Ranger. Starting in the second quarter, Indians down, looking to change that. Jaden Hernandez moving past defenders, breaking tackles. Folks, that man's gone, and this will set up the next play. Colby Rogers pitches it off to Randy Joe Villarreal. He's in for the Paint Rock touchdown. They still trail at that point. Now watch this. A kickoff return. Andrew Cabrera finds comfort on the side. Look at him go. Past midfield, no one in front of him. A huge return to put the Indians in scoring position. However, Paint Rock would fall 54-6 last night against the Bulldogs from Ranger. All right, when we come back to Friday Night Football, quarter number four, we cap off week two. We look ahead to some spotlight games of week three. We'll have that and much more right after the break. Welcome back to Friday Night Football. Before we look to head to week number three, the Texas high school football season, let's look back on some of the best headlines of week two action. We'll start with the Angry Orange. What a gritty two-point victory on the road it was tonight. Sterling City win another thriller. They move to 2-0 and on the season. And Erie County, you always remember your first win as a head coach. Congrats to Sean Harrison of the Hornets for getting that last night. Next week, once again, the slate of games will get started on Thursday night with both Paint Rock and Menard in action on the road, continuing non-district action. Here's some of the games that we have for you. My good friend, the Quad Box. Central, back home again when they host the Cougars from Abilene Cooper. Looking to get some revenge on a three-point loss last year. This will be the second straight year these two meet after not playing one another since 
2013. The Chiefs heading over to Vernon next week on the road when they take on those Lions. Wall Jim Nett, a big one over in the big country. We'll have highlights definitely of those ones. Always a rivalry when those two meet. And our KLST game of the week, a battle of 2-0 and teams in Class 2A. Sonora and El Dorado meeting in Eagle Country. We'll have that and much, much for you next week on Friday Night Football. So that'll do it for KLST's Friday Night Football. For everyone here at KLST, have a good weekend. Catering for Friday Night Football is provided by Chick-fil-A. Friday Night Football on KLST, brought to you by Randall Motors. Closed captioning for the hearing impaired is sponsored by the Law Office of Rick DeHoyas.